Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm planting a cocktail garden in this elevated raised bed. I'm super excited about this project because I've never actually done a dedicated cocktail garden and it's something that I really am interested in and I love to do. My mom, sister and I, especially like it's a festive thing, we love to make anything herbal and anything cocktail so we can make one and then go tour the garden. It's just such a fun thing to do with family or friends. We had planned on uh, planting this up on one of our family members' balconies. They live in downtown Boise, Idaho. They've got a beauty, beautiful balcony, beautiful view, and we thought it would be a really fun opportunity to talk about balcony gardening uh, and smaller space gardening, which we don't have the opportunity to do as much here. Uh, and with the state of how everything's going, we couldn't get it over there. They will end up with this garden, uh, but I wanted to get it planted now because it's warm enough and such. So anyway, we'll have to imagine for now that we're on a balcony and we're gonna plant in this two by four garden. So let's go over the plants I've got because there are some beautiful ones here. And I'm kind of tailoring this both to some cocktails I know we like to drink and I'm gonna give you recipes to all of these things. Um, and then I've got several recipes, new ones that I wanna try. So starting with the top plants right here, this is a tomato I started from seed. This is a good hearted tomato. You can see it's already setting its fruit. The reason I chose this one is that it only grows 12 to 18 inches tall and wide, sets a ton of fruit. It's a semi-determinate tomato, so it will produce a ton of tomatoes through the season like an indeterminate type, but it will stay very small. So it's perfect for a small space gardening. And then we've got a pepper called Fire Away, Fire Away Hot and Heavy. Look at these. I think that will bring some interest right there. They're beautiful. And this is for a spicy mojito, which I wanna try. I think it sounds really interesting. And then we've got three strawberry plants. These are the buried treasure red. So they've got the red blooms. They produce nice big berries. And these will be nice to muddle in drinks or to use as garnish, um, some things like that. And we could even use the flowers as well. I've got one sweet romance lavender. Now I am not traditionally a huge fan of the lavender flavor that's too strong. I have to go very light. Um, but either way, I like the flowers. I like the, just a slight aroma. So using the flowers as a garnish is really nice. I think it'll add some pretty to our bed too, which that's important to me as well. We've got an amazel basil. You only need one of these because, oh my word, they smell amazing, they get huge. And the good thing about this one, which I've grown it for several, few, a few years now, um, when it starts to set flower, it doesn't change the flavor or the productivity of the plant. Um, so while you would want to keep pruning on this and keep making your basil gimlets with this one um, so that it stays a little bit more manageable in size, uh, it, it's not affected like the older varieties of basil are once they start to flower. So it's not as much maintenance that way, which I like. We've got a barbecue rosemary right here, which this is a, um, we float a sprig of this in one of our, it's a cocktail called Fireside. It's amazing. We've got a tri, this is a tri, yeah, tricolor sage. Look how pretty that is. This is for a new one I wanna try where you candy the leaves and then float the leaves in the drink. Uh, this is a Wedgwood, English Wedgwood Thyme. And you know that I'm gonna be using these things for a ton of other things other than just cocktails. It'll be nice to have, like while I have it here anyway, it will be close to our kitchen door, which is a benefit of growing things in a bed like this is that you can put it on a deck or a patio right by your kitchen. So easy access. If you're entertaining, you've got friends over, you can take them out and be like, look at my garden. Would you like to harvest some herbs for your cocktail? So anyway, this one is also one that goes along with uh, lemon and blueberries and we float a thyme sprig in the drink. And then on the bottom level here, we've got some purple basil and I chose this just because I wanted a little variance of color and I do tend to use a lot of basil in cocktails. That's Basil and mint are probably the biggest ones. Uh, we've got lemongrass. This is for a new uh, cocktail we're gonna, we're gonna try called the Soho cocktail. And then we've got a stevia, which is a natural sweetener. And I've never really tried to make any kind of a syrup or anything with um, this type of, with stevia. I usually make it with sugar, straight up sugar. So I think it'll be interesting to try out um, try this out in some capacity. Now the only herb that I did not include in here that is kind of essential in any cocktail garden I would think is a mint. And mint is a type that if you plant it in a container with others it doesn't mix well because it wants to take over. So mint needs to be in its own container like maybe right next door to this one. So let's head back to the raised bed and I want to talk to you about some of the things that are going on in there and then we'll start planting. 
So this is from Gardner Supply. It's called the self-watering elevated cedar raised bed. Although you can get them separately, you can get a raised bed without self-watering, you can get it with self-watering. If you already have a bed like this, you can buy the inserts and retrofit your current um, raised bed to fit these. And I like the color of this. So I chose this on purpose. This is a color called graphite because I thought with the style of building um, that this is the balcony where it's gonna go, I thought it would look really sleek and really pretty. But I think there's like four different stain colors or you can get natural cedar. You can also get it with wheels. Um, but the self-watering thing is what I'm most excited about. So inside here, I'm gonna kind of take it apart and show you how this works. So I'm gonna take the top trays off and show you the bottom of the self-watering insert. There's our little float right there. So you can see these bottom trays right here. And if I lift them all the way out, they're held, not held together, but they're connected by a tube right there. So the self-watering, whoops, reservoir, reservoir isn't um, separate. It's all connected by that right there. And then this little piece of wood actually helps kind of bridge the gap so no soil falls out. And you might, if you got this, sometimes I think the tube will come a little bit longer. You could put this piece of wood either in between the two inserts or on the side, however it fits the best. So at this point, I actually need to go get my hose and fill these up before I put it back together. So let me go do that. Okay, so we need to fill these up. They hold 10 gallons of water, which is a pretty decent amount. Look at that, connected. You can fill up this reservoir after you've planted it, but it's really nice to just kind of see how it works, see how long it takes to fill it. Um, and I'll show you the float system and how to fill it up after it's already planted here in a second. Okay, I think that's good because I know that there's gonna be a little bit of water displacement when I put these on. And these are the tops of the reservoirs right here. So I'm just gonna place that right down over the top. Yes, yeah, see how the water fills in there? Nice. This is our water tube and our float right here, little cork. And so when the water is full, this thing sticks way up. When it goes down, it'll float down to the bottom. So there's that, and then there's this side. And see how this is positioned with the little piece of wood right here, just to bridge this little gap on the side so that soil doesn't come barreling through. So that's it for the self-watering reservoir. So just imagine this, well, you won't have to imagine for very long, imagine it full of soil. And then this will come up out of the soil right there so you can access this. I mean, you won't really be able to see it because all the once the plants grow up, it'll kind of shroud it, but it makes it easy and you can stick your hose right down in there or watering can or whatever you're using. So now I'm gonna fill it with soil. I brought up some potting soil as well. You know what, I could use raised bed mix. Should I use raised bed mix? I'm gonna go grab some raised bed mix and then we'll use that with some of the compost and biotone. We're gonna give these plants a good start. So I decided to do just straight raised bed mix with the biotone starter fertilizer mixed in with it. Um, honestly, because I wanna get more experience with the raised bed mix. I have filled up a lot of planters like this though with straight potting mix and it works totally fine. I'm just eager to get more experience with this. So I'm going to fill up the bed with the raised bed mix. We're gonna add in a little bit of biotone and then we will start planting. I actually watched the video on the Gardener Supply website on how to set this up, and they showed that you should pack soil down into these little reservoirs because that's how the water wicks up into the upper part. So you wanna make sure that the soil packs down in there. So I'm gonna do that quick. All right, that soil level looks really good and it took one, two, three, four, one and a half cubic bags to fill this reservoir. I thought it was gonna take six. So now I'm gonna add in a little bit of the starter fertilizer and I'm just gonna eyeball it here, spread some around the top. Then we'll work it in with our hands, my hands. There we go. So now I'm gonna grab all my plants and I'm just gonna work on laying them out if it's possible that I might not use all of them. Anybody wanna take bets? <laughs> Lemongrass gets quite large. I think that'd be pretty in the center. Tomato can come out the side. This. Oh yeah. So my reasoning kind of, I don't know if I have much reasoning for why I put things where, but the um, pepper, anything with fruit. So the pepper, 
the tomato, which are on opposite ends, and then my three strawberries are on the edges so that their fruit can kind of spill over the side. And then, you know what, I think I'm gonna swap these. The stevia I'm gonna put here. This is a smaller plant, while this one grows a little bit taller. The amethyst basil will also grow a little bit taller. Our lemongrass will be our tall centerpiece plant. And then our amazel basil will fill in right here. Our lavender can kind of spill out the side here. Same with our tricolor sage and our thyme. I think this is gonna be a gorgeous planter. how nice it feels to garden at like a waist level. I can totally see myself switching to this size of raised bed, like maybe even in my vegetable garden space, eventually like maybe every five years, I'll add an extra board so that eventually I'll get them high enough to where it's comfortable and I don't have to do a bunch of bending over. Plus like gardening in this mix right here is just like luxurious if soil can be luxurious, this is. And I think they're all gonna do really well. I mean, I packed a lot in here, but I do think that it's going to, like they'll grow and fill in. Some might be a little bit large for the space they're in, but I think for one season, it's just gonna be perfect. And you know, basil right here is not a perennial. Uh, for us anyway, um, neither is a rosemary. This one will have to be taken out. Uh, and then, you know, our uh, tomato and pepper, the only perennials that I have in here, for me uh, anyway, are the lavender, sage, thyme, and I think that that's it, and strawberries. Everything else is either annual or you have to dig it and store it, like the lemongrass won't survive here, rosemary won't unless we put it in our greenhouse or bring it inside. Um, and some things just don't do well inside. I've tried lemongrass inside and it hasn't done well for me. Um, haven't tried it extensively though, so you guys may have some tips for me on that. Uh, I do need to water it in. I left a generous lip here so that we didn't have any soil overflow. In fact, I might come in with some straw and top dress with that because it helps with our tomato, it'll help with our strawberries, just keeping the soil off of the plant. Um, and I actually think it looks kind of, I don't know, I like the look of it. It just looks so appropriate to be in this sort of space. But it is an extremely important thing to water in from overhead, even though our self-watering reservoirs are full, and this is with all self-watering containers, because one, you need to settle the, the root balls in, excuse me, root balls in, make sure there's no air pockets. You also want to make sure that you water almost a little bit more than you would normally with your regular containers when you initially water them in because you want to make sure the soil is completely saturated uh, so that the wicking system will work properly because when you have peat in a soil mix which most soils have that in them if the peat dries out it can actually repel water so you want to make sure that it's well watered in so i'm going to do that really quick and i just like to keep the water off the foliage and i try to go around each plant and we may have to add a little bit of mix in. I might have to bury a couple plants a little bit deeper, but this is a good time to do it. Oh, I also saved all my tags. That's always handy information to have. So after you've watered it in from overhead, you do wanna water it from overhead for the first maybe week or two until the plants have had a chance to root in and create a little bit of a root system so that they can reach the water that's coming up. Uh, so that's just kind of standard rules for any self-watering container. And then after you're done with all your overhead watering, this is how you fill the reservoir. So you could either, let me take the diffuser off. I don't know if that's what it's called. Breaker, water breaker. You can stick your hose right down in there. Make sure it's not touching the little float right there so that the float can move freely. But that's how you water it. Now ours is almost full and it will start to leak. <laughs> I can see it's starting to come out. Um, they aren't like watertight, which is a good thing. You want there to be a little bit of an overflow so water can't back up into your soil reservoir. Uh, that's really important. You don't want your plants to be floating. Uh, but we are going to be positioning this in a very sunny position because that's what all of these herbs want. And then um, I will be side dressing with, I'm not gonna be doing like a weekly fertilizing water soluble like I do with my annual flowers. Rather, I worked biotone in the soil today, so I'll probably wait a few weeks before I come in, maybe like 30, 40 days before I come in with garden tone. And I'll just sprinkle some garden tone around the plants in there and water it in again from overhead. So I make sure to push that fertilizer down to the root system of the plants. 
and I don't even know how long I'm going to have this garden. Like I said, um, this is, was meant for relatives and they may come and pick it up depending on how things go, but I may end up having it here and tending to it throughout the year and that'll be really fun too and you'll be able to see it in garden tours um, as well. But now I kind of want to sit down real quick and run through the different cocktails that we're going to use these herbs for because they're things I'm really excited about. Okay, so I've got my paper here because I wanted to be able to share some of the main ingredients that some of these cocktails, both the ones that I know and love and the new ones feature. Um, so first off, there's the basil gimlet, which is for me a gin base. My mom likes it with vodka and we use basil for that and fresh lime juice. Um, there's the one called the fireside, which is so good. It's a vodka based drink, but it also has freshly squeezed grapefruit juice and you float a rosemary spear in it. And so you get that aro aroma of rosemary while you're drinking this really bright citrusy flavored drink, but it's uh, sweetened with maple syrup and there's a little pinch of salt in it and it sounds super weird, but it's so delicious. So that link will be there. Well, links for all these will be down below. Of course, there's the mojito, which you've got rum and mint and then new ones. So blackberry sage gin smash, which is a gin based drink that you have blackberries and candied sage leaves, which I mentioned before. So I think that's gonna be both beautiful and tasty. There's the Garden Patch Smash, which is a raspberry lavender syrup. So I think that's gonna be a really interesting one. And that's the only one on my list that I'm like, I may have to adjust the amount of lavender because I just don't like it very strong. Like I don't like a strong floral taste, but the raspberry and blueberries and lime and stuff in there sound really good. There's the Tamahito, which is uh, a Bloody Mary kind of drink. Um, and that's what our tomatoes are gonna be used for and it's a vodka based drink. It also has basil and oregano, which I didn't have. I couldn't find an oregano plant, but I already have an oregano in another pot, so I'm good there. And then there's the spicy mojito, which is what our pepper is gonna be used for. Also um, mint and rum and lime sparkling water. Couple more, the Soho cocktail is our lemongrass, mint, ginger, gin, ginger ale, lime juice cocktail and then country thyme which is our thyme sprig and there's blueberries muddled with lemon juice and a little bit of vodka so i think we are going to be set for the year and of course you can you can make whatever kind of garden you want you can tailor it toward your own tastes like i used all things that i like to use um, like we've done a spaghetti planter before you could do a salad garden you could do all flowers if you wanted to do that um, but the whole point is that these make it very accessible to put it up on a patio or a balcony in the case that we were going to use it it's just a fun thing and i'm really excited for this and if this doesn't end up staying at our house for very long i'll probably have to repeat something very similar for us here in our garden so anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video again we will link all of these delicious recipes down below as well as everything we used i'll put a plant list down below as well we will see you in the next video <laughs> bye